Dave knows how. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about taking the front end loader off the Kubota L2800 series tractor. And this procedure may vary from tractor manufacturer to tractor manufacturer and from series tractors to series tractors. So in other words, the L series tractor may come off like this, but an M series or MX series may be a little bit different. I don't know because I've never taken a loader off of one of those tractors. However, if you have one of those tractors and you have a video showing taking the front end loader off, please leave a comment in, underneath this video with a link to your video. If you would like to make a video about taking the front end loader off of your tractor, also leave a comment under this video. Come back over here, leave a comment with a link and in the comment, tell what brand tractor you have and what model number with the link to that video. So in the future, if someone comes across this video and this is not their particular model, they can look down through the comments and they can find a John Deere whatever or a Massey whatever model number that they're looking for to learn how to take the front end loader off their tractor. Let's jump right into this. So first thing we're gonna do is crank the tractor up, raise the front end up enough to get these kickstands set down in place where they need to go. We're just gonna let the tractor idle. It doesn't need to be going full tilt. We got their kickstand down. It goes on, down pretty easy. We'll get the one on the other side. Okay, now that we've got the kickstand down in place, we're going to tilt the front bucket down to about 20 degrees, or roughly on this particular model tractor, if we put it where it's almost parallel with this part of the loader frame, that is about where I need it to be. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get the front cutting edge of the bucket to touch the ground before the kickstand touches the ground. We don't want the weight on the kickstand. So let's roll that down in a dump position. Somewhere right around in there. And now we're gonna take the loader down to the ground till it's just touching. And we'll notice that the Kickstands aren't even contacting the ground. We got plenty of room under there. We're gonna take the bucket down a little further and take the weight off the front wheels. We just took a little bit of weight off the front wheels, not much, just enough to push this back and that makes it so we can pull this pin out. We'll go around the other side and take that other pin out. So now that we got both pins out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the loader control function and we're gonna curl the bucket back. Right now we've got it in a dump position about 20 degrees till that front cutting edge touches. Now we're gonna curl it back, roll the bucket back. That's the only function we're gonna use. We're not gonna raise, lower, or anything like that. We're just gonna curl it back. And when we do, these kickstands are gonna to touch the ground and this is gonna hinge out of here. We've got a camera set up right here so you can see what's happening here. We've got a camera set up here so you can see what's going on down here. Let's watch what happens. There you go. So now at this point, we have the bucket pretty much level with the ground. It's sitting flat on the ground. 
the kickstands are engaging the ground and they're holding the weight of this end of just the loader frame. You can see the loader is up off of the pin that holds it in place right in here. And if you look down through here, you can see how much space you have from the end of this to the back side of this right here. So looking down in there and taking notice to that, that's about where you need to be when you pull the tractor back up in here to hook it back up, okay? Somewhere in there, it doesn't have to be perfect because the way they've got this thing designed, it goes together pretty daggone easy, really. So let's go over here on this side and disconnect the hydraulic lines so that we can back this tractor back away from here and see how that goes. <clears throat> so over here on this side, we've got a third function valve on this tractor, so we're going to go ahead and release the pressure off that third function valve just by cycling it a couple of times. Um, we're going to disconnect that third function hose there, this one here. Now we're going to cycle that front end loader valve. We're going to go to the right. We're going to go to the left, we're going to go up, we're going to go down, and now we're going to go ahead and disconnect our lines. Make sure you put your dust covers in as you're disconnecting your lines. And that's all the lines. Off to the side and out of the way. We're going to put the dust covers up here to cover these up. And we'll get our dust covers in here. Well, it looks like I lost a dust cover. <laughs> anyway, we'll get a dust cover for that. And at this point, we can go ahead and back this thing out. So let's do that. Let's back it on out of there. All right, so as you can see, that came off pretty pretty slick, pretty quick. Uh, it didn't take long. We've got our loader just kind of sitting here on the stands. By itself, it's not gonna go anywhere. There's no problem. Where this is setting at is not completely level. It's kind of slopes this way and this way and that way and every which way. It's definitely not perfect by long shot. I take this loader off in all kinds of places. I got a little hillside over here on the driveway that I put it on. It, it's never been a problem, knock on wood, to get it back on. I've never had a problem. So I, I you know, I just, I don't even worry about that. Uh, you know, don't not take your loader off out of fear. It's pretty easy to do. And uh, they make it like this for a reason, right? Anyway, let's move this camera Put it over here so we can see what it looks like when we pull up on here and hopefully the camera's still working we won't lose the footage right we'll see what it looks like when we pull up on here and what we're looking at when we're looking down through here on this tower as we're pulling up in here and we can see where the bottom edge of this is located in reference to the back side of this we don't want to get too close because if we get too close, it's going to scratch the paint off the inside of there. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Already been there, done that. Learn from my mistakes. It doesn't really have to be that close. This doesn't have to be that accurate. Sometimes when I put this on, this side is closer than that side or that side is closer back than this side. Unless it's really, really, really massively 
torqued and twisted, it, it's going to go on. Okay, this thing has, you see that? This thing has some leeway to it. It will adjust between this and that side. It's going to adjust. It's going to go in there. They make it like that on purpose, okay, to make it easy. So let's go ahead and back up and get this thing back on. So now, I don't know if you noticed or not, but something happened when I put this back on. And hopefully you were paying attention and you did notice. This part hit the tire and it pushed it up into here. So it, re it pushed this cylinder retracted back into here. However, on the other side, we'll walk over there. On the other side, this side did not hit the tire. So it stayed. And in fact, when that side pushed in, this side pushed out. So at one point, this was hinged out here and that one was in the other way. So what I did, I pulled in far enough so that the back of this came in contact with this, and then I pushed this in until it equalized that one on that side to be the same. I hope I explained that in a way that, that you can understand it. So if that happens, don't freak out, okay? Don't freak out. Just drive on forward and let the back of this touch this arm that's sticking out the furthest and push it in. And when you start pushing it in, the pressure from the cylinder is gonna push this one back out. So that one was out further, we drove in. We pushed it in, and as we pushed that in, this one pushed out. Now it's back lined up really fairly good. We're going to put a camera down here so that you can see what goes on when we put this back on here. So we're going to jump around here, hook the hydraulic lines back up, and get this thing reinstalled. Okay, so around here on this side, we're going to start with the yellow and the red. They're all the way in the back. We're going to go ahead and remove those dust covers. Now, if you've been driving the tractor around a little bit or somebody's been on there playing with the joystick, uh, you may have to wiggle this joystick side to side to relieve the pressure. Hooking up the white one and now the blue one. And that's all hooked up. We haven't hooked up the third function valve quite yet, but that's okay. We're going to get to it in just a second. 
let's go ahead and start the tractor up and get this thing reinstalled so to seat this back in here where it needs to go in the frame we're going to use that same curl dump function we're going to dump the bucket back to that 20 degree area mark and when that happens it's going to push this back seat it in place and it's going to take the weight off the kickstand so let's fire it up get that done So there we go. So there we go. We've got it back in the 20 degree mark roughly. It's pretty much in line with this part of the loader arm. Yours may be a little bit different. At this point we can get this back in here like that. We can go around the other side. Hopefully you was able to see how this went back together down here on that video. Just go around the other side and we'll get this pin in. Now that that pin's in, now we can go ahead and start the tractor back up and we're going to raise the bucket so that we can get the kickstands up. So raise them up high enough so we can get these kickstands up. That's good for the camera, right? <laughs> All right. Now we'll come on back around here on this side, and we're going to go ahead and hook up this third function valve. So I'm going to go ahead and push a button on the third function valve to relieve any pressure that may be in the valve here. Okay. Now, if this thing was setting out in the sun, these lines have been heated up the hydraulic fluid that's in there will build pressure and sometimes when you go hook this up it just won't go on it'll be so tight you just can't get it on there so what you need to do is i like to use a little piece of brass this is a little piece of brass we see if we can get it a little close on the camera it's probably about a three eighths diameter piece of brass brass is really soft it's not going to damage anything and then I got a piece of steel that I keep in my toolbox that I basically use as a hammer. This is this is my hammer, you know, because the toolbox is kind of small, so a long handle hammer just isn't gonna fit. So we use this. So we'll take a rag, and on the end of this hose, we're gonna put this rag around here, sort of like this. In fact, we can actually cover the whole thing if we want to. And then we're going to set this down in here, right on top of that pin that's down in there. And then we're going to give it a good strike with this. And that's going to push that pin down and relieve the pressure that's in there. Okay, and sometimes you have to bump that thing two or three times to get it to relieve the pressure. If it's been sitting out in the sun for a period of time, it is going to hold a lot of pressure so just knock that thing off don't forget to put the rag over it though fluid injection in the skin is a bad thing can be a nasty nasty infection so you don't want to you don't want to you don't want to go down that rabbit hole believe me so we're going to go ahead and route this down and hook that up now on this one this that one that we just did was a the female here's the male it has a little plunge on it too um you can just take this or a piece of brass or something and just tap it like that just tap it on the end well just like that right there um of course you know you want to cover it with a rag or something to keep the fluid from flying in your eyes or anything like that and just bump it like that you can see the fluid ran out on it 
that'll relieve the pressure that's in the line itself and now we can just go ahead and hook this back up well we might be able to hook it up there you go all right so there we go we got it all back on loader installed well there you go um track the loaders back on very simple to do they make these things easy to go on and go off again if you have a channel and you have a tractor like this one or a different model or a different brand and you want to make a video about putting the loader on and off leave a link to it in the comment underneath this video and that way people that come along and watch my video if they want to search down through the comments and find those videos that may be pertaining to their specific Kubota tractor model or another brand of tractor altogether, a Massey or whatever the case may be. Um, they can locate that and come to your channel, check out your video, and if they like what they see, I'm sure they will subscribe if they haven't already. Anyhow, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.